by that much. If you change schools or you get your school changed, well, change transfers, that's also an, another, another indicator. Opportunity, opportunity transfer is basically the euphemism we get picked up. You get involuntary transfer somewhere else. Absenteeism, if you have, a, if you have more than 10 days, then you get even more. Right? So if you look at this little graph right here, these are some of the schools in that area in, in the public district be. This is Cobra City, Venice, all the way to Mid City. Jefferson, the, uh, you can't see from here. Right? Uh, Jefferson is 26.2%. This is back in 97. So, the, you know, like one year before the first year of, of Mall. And in 07, it was a 56% drop off rate. Belmont went from 38 to 97 to 5, French Shaw 33 to 48, Law 52 to 48, and district overall was 26 to 51. So thank goodness for those few schools out there in Granada Hills and um, uh, other places, places that, that, that keep those, that's it, that, those numbers up. And um, that's so, so what do we do about that? You know, like how, how, do we, how do we deal with that? And we know what these indicators are, right? But what is behind these? Because, you know, traditionally our efforts have been very, sort of like, you know, the doctor who the guy goes into the ER and says, you know, I, I've got appendicitis, so I'll just cut it out, you know. <laughs> until, it, until it starts, until you're screaming in agony, <coughs> we'll just kind of let it go. Well, what are some things behind that? So we know that there's this idea of self the idea that, that if you have the belief that you have a certain agency in your, in your own behavior and also in the environment around you, then your behaviors will also increase as well. Not saying the self-confidence, self-confidence, I can do, yes, I can. Whereas self-efficacy is, I know I've done this before, I've these experiences, or I've seen these experiences before, you know. And how do you build that? How do you foster that sense? Uh, because we know that sense not only, not only affects their behavior, but also affects the way they respond to failure. So, you know, someone with a high, high efficacy level, they flunk it, but it's they'll be like, okay, well, you know what, I'll just, I know what I messed up on, I'm going to do that next time. Whereas someone with a low efficacy level, uh, they're going to say, right, you know what, forget it. It's not even worth trying, I'm just going to stay home for the next few weeks. Right? So, one of the things I, I, I thought about to address this is, okay, can we, can we use asynchronous technology and use knowledge related communities to develop this, this self-efficacy, to develop those things that, you know, we know are part of self-efficacy, like master experiences, or when you finally master something, you know, that, that stays with you. Okay. If you've ever weight, lifted weights or ridden a bike or something like that, you know, it's not just muscle memory, it's, the, uh, it's that, that feeling that you have that mastery and it comes back to you, right? that, that, that you're willing to, to uh, tackle that challenge once again. By care, you've seen someone else do it. You know, someone else in the family passed Past test, went to college, graduated high school, social persuasion, and then the last one is physiological arousal, which is the key to the of things. And of all of these, we know that mastery experience is the strongest. Well, obviously, because if you've done it before, you know you have a good sense of how to deal with this. And knowledge good communities might be able to provide that speak these these um, these builders for self Because it, it, whereas um, in you know previous models you have this this sort of shall construct this approach where you say, here's your, uh, here's your assignment, kids, now go, go do it, right? This is more like, all right, here's our assignment, let's pull our resources together, create these artifacts, you know, uh, store them in a central repository, and then develop expertise within them. So, um, the, the couple cycles that I went through, mo most of it was done online, because I, I believe that asynchronous communities uh, is really necessary, especially when you have class of 47, 48, 51. It's really difficult to create, you know, knowledge building communities just within the classroom and within that 61 minutes during each day. So, asynchronous helps. It, it, it breaks things down. It makes things more accessible to everything, right? And also, it, it allows people from different classes, different different grades, even to, to share experiences, and also from different times. You don't have to be on, you can participate at different times of day. So, we also created a, a website. So, this was the central repository of knowledge. The, the knowledge that they started off with, where I gave them. Then we go on to Emoto. Um, I think that one of the year was like 267 members. And obviously that's way more than even my, my student load. So we had students from other classes going in. So that, 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 that's an interesting, an, an interesting paradigm that I didn't expect. I, I, I expected participation in my own classes. I didn't expect other people from them. And you know, then the next idea was to engage in, in these, men, these mentoring and expertise building experiences. Uh, um, I'm going to skip ahead. Here you can see some of uh, some of the experiences that we did. We, we used a lot of learning circles. Just, you know, 
for, for those of us who, who've been through that mall, that's where you get a, a, a small group of people together and then you, you, you each have a responsibility to each other, to yourself, to the group, to, to contribute, to change your, uh, your work and also to change the work of people around you. And so here you see students kind of walk into each other's stuff. Uh, here's one kid who's you know, talking about one of the classes that we had and said, I feel intelligent. And considering that two of these uh, are from special day and this one and all, all of these students here are are in that part of the you know, that, that very high risk of dropping out category, that's, that's, um, that to me is an indicator of self-efficacy development. We also did wiki spaces where we had um, people post up their, their, their victories and also there's a piece of things that we're proud of. And, um, and eventually at the end, you know, at the end of the year, I, I wanted them to create something, an artifact, that, that would um, make use of all things that they've done. At the semi agency, the idea that you, you never understand any knowledge, right? That you can go and change someone else's stuff. And, and that's really a key component of knowledge for the too, because you, you can't really build knowledge as a community unless you're willing to alter the things that, that, each, that other people contribute. The last project here that we're looking at right now is what a student made, not for the students that come next year, which is the original assignment. But for the teacher that one. since I won't be teaching this class next year, the, the teacher that will be teaching next year probably doesn't have any idea what, what they're doing. And so the student <laughs> created a kind of tutorial for that teacher. And then only one thing is like, don't rely on the books only. And you know, here's a list of some of the legacy projects. So th this is interesting, right? Uh, final analysis out of um, the, the two, you know, the high high risk classes, they're, they're probably academic literacy classes. And out of those, you had, um, well, this is the way we measured self-efficacy. So most of these had a high self-efficacy levels. There were some that did not because, as you can see over there, the green bars are people with more than 30 absences. So they basically show up five times in the semester. And in terms of grades, well, these are you know, the, the fail bars. So one fail or less of the green bars, uh, less than three of the blue ones, and the red one is three or more fail. So with, within Within uh, the two classes, there were six and there were three in the two classes that had three more fails. So they, they are still at very high risk level. But the other students are not at very high risk level. Remember, every class you fail increases your job rate by that much. So some of the things that I thought about at, at the very end here, well, when I was, I was you know, looking back over my research, was that um, as leaders and as mentors, you know, we have to be much more aware of the people that, that, that we are in charge of. Right? As a teacher, you, you, it behooves us to be much more aware of the needs of the students and how they, well, what, what really drives them uh, to create these things. Right? It's one thing to say, go to mode and do your homework and post it. Right? Very low, low success, in that, especially with students that don't have you know, reliable access. But then if you can create a community where people feel responsibility to each other um, to, to perform, then it's, it's a whole different thing. And as Jack was pointing out either earlier, that the idea of meaningful engagement also matters. That's what learning circle essentially is, right? You have these very high, um, high levels of meaningful engagement. How we create that in a large classroom today, that's been difficult. I think asynchronous technology is part of the solution, but it remains to be seen um, how we create reliable systems of implementation. But definitely, definitely as, as a leader, as a constructive leader, moving around and, and then drawing in these, these resources together and, and trying to get it helps. So I think about five minutes remaining, right? I'm really curious. Okay. <laughs> and and um, I get all this because I, I know the students that are engaged. And I did my actual research at the college level and I'm seeing this in the high school. I'm wondering what your question is. Ah, okay. So here's here's what I got from all, all, all of this. Um, aside from the idea of uh, the personal relationships, uh, trumping all other aspects of the, of the plan. Right? You can have this great plan and you know with lots of incremental steps, but if you haven't built those personal relationships between your, your, your community, it's not going to fall apart. Secondly, it's the way you look at the problems that are presented to you. All right. So for instance, being in education, you're going to face a lot of obstacles. You know, not to know technology, not to time, this, that. You know. So look at it uh, and, and see where you can bring your expertise from your other, your, your, other, your other prior knowledge to bear. For instance, we didn't have enough computers to start with one, and I believe it was like a, you know, a four duel from 2006, and it was just that one for 48. Right? 
So how do you deal with that? You go around, you know, you start, start building computers. You start you know, building them out of, you know, you start building basically a bunch of Linux boxes. And then it's just free. And that's one of the emotive things, too. You know. just, um, it would be really cool if you, those apps that come out could be done using something that, that's, that's Linux and Linux and Splash is not going to be available soon. So that's a big takeaway. Another big takeaway is that when you're building your power base and doing your action research, uh, or actually in anything really, not just action research, um, look for people that do not have a lot of power already, rather than trying to seek out people that have well-established developed power bases. So for instance, in, in my, my separate community, um, at, at that school, not just students, in, in terms of faculty, I, I found a lot of teachers who were really struggling. I mean, these were the ostracized teachers, not because they were bad people, but because they were kind of fumbling teachers, right? So when I started working a lot with them, they became my power base, and they, they gave legitimacy to my claims. And, and I can see that in, in an education um, form, you know, kind of setting moving forward, that's something that I would want to carry with me too. I want to make sure that I always spend a lot of time with teachers that, that could really benefit from whatever I bring to the table and then try to create those relationships because that affects my progress long run. Do you find that to be true also for your students? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And very important to when you find those people to see what kind of things they can bring to the table. They often bring these things. So. so. Um, things that I ran into that did not expect, well, aside from the one computer and 47 piece kids, uh, I got, you know, classes changed around a lot. So I, I remember one time that on a Thursday, the principal comes and says, you know, I want to talk to you about okay. so, You know, we, um, the good news is that the charter schools are taking over our campus. The bad news is that the deal we made with the police department is that we're going to give away four of our buildings and your classroom, well, four of our classrooms, and yours is one of them. So yes, yeah, 72 hours to get your stuff out and move to this new room. Um, but don't worry about it. We're going to pay you six hours to come out on Saturday to do it. <laughs> she gave me this pat on my back, like, I'm looking out for you. <laughs> Forget about Saturday. Yeah. Do you find your students come to you prepared for next year's work, or are they slow or all the keyboards? What are you doing with um, in terms of your average, you know, ninth grade student from like four to the four, four group, they are they are below. Okay. Yeah, they, they're probably reading. You know, if, when we did the accelerated reader test, which is a, sort of like a standardized mm -hmm. assessment, they, they all scored, and most of them scored below the average. And and that's just you know, part of that is the way the test is built because you they want to make sure that the first time you take a test, it scores below average so that they can show. So yeah, it, there's, if you look at some of the software, you can see that it's been designed that way. Uh, Scholastic is, is one of the companies that does stuff like that. But on the other hand, it is true that they, their levels are improved. So, can you be more explicit about one or two of the activities that you use to build that learning circle sure. connection? Sure. Well, um, because I was afraid that learning uh, that I was doing learning circles wrong, so for most of my research, I referred to them as writing workshops. But I didn't want Margaret to say that's not you know, a learning circle. You can't call it that. <laughs> so I, I called it a, a writing workshop, and um, and basically what we did is I we, we get the six you know we, we divide the class into in groups of six, and this is from group one to Then that group of six would sit together with me, and while those two other groups are doing something else because they kind of rotate through, then the, the, um, the objective in this small group is that we're going to focus on this one prompt, and then first we're going to deconstruct it, then we're going to you know, bring discussion, risk, you know, write, write an, an artifact response to it, and then we're going to you know, kind of use that epistemic agency and you know, alter each other's stuff. And with that one, it was really key that I became part of the group that I had to model it first. So I wound up writing a new one every single, every single time that we did that. But that, that really you know, proved that in. So that, that was one of the one of these reasons. In your district, do you guys have anything like a continuation or alternative school? Many. The risk? The, the risk? Yes. Were the numbers <coughs> a little bit smaller and maybe they could get a little more attention? Technically, yes. In, in reality, no. Because what, 
you, what you have is that you have all these small schools. You know, there's one called Opportunities for Learning. They all have these great names, you know, City of Angels, stuff like that. And what really happens is that the kid is, is messing up pretty badly, maybe some you know, behavior issues. The dean goes, you know what, this is really not the environment for you. There's this great school that you don't have to go to school except for three, three hours a day. You don't have to go to school for three days a week. How about it? So the kid goes, all right, I'll do it. And it turns out that it's like a school where it's you know, staffed by a lot of teachers that are new teachers or, or, or teachers that are inexperienced or whatever it is. Um, most, the success rate of many, many of those schools is not so great. Uh, at least in my experience, maybe in a different you know, local districts. But um, it's not as great. Whether that's an efficacy issue or whether it's an ability or, or you know what what exactly is, is the issue there, um, we don't use Facebook for many reasons because uh, there's you know there's certain problems with that. I mean, teachers themselves are a lot of not so kosher uh, things on Facebook, and Modo really helps in that regard. And the buy-in is tough at first, especially since you have only made about about 40% of students with really a internet access right at home. So you you have to kind of develop that in the classroom. Um, I'm, I'm a big proponent of developing computer labs inside the classroom as opposed to this kind of far off, you know, isolated location. It's great to have a computer lab that you can bring administrators and people from the district in and say, look at this great computer lab that we've got here. It's like a brand spanking new condition. But really it becomes very difficult to use that. If you have just four to six computers inside the classroom, you can do a lot more. I mean, we, we're running really old technology, pin cores, you know, and just build off the strap bars. Hey, Kevin. My daughter's in the language bag. She, she's been studying Chinese. Oh, what's her name? Uh, Nikki Greenfield. Nikki Greenfield. Uh, I probably know her from the language, language teachers. Uh, do you know who her English teacher is? Uh, she had Mrs. Lockwood this last year. I know exactly who she is. Uh, well, I know exactly who Mrs. Lockwood is, and I probably know who she is. She was at Mr. Espinosa, who she was. She was an art, AP art this year. Very nice. And, um, well, ho hopefully, if, I knew I, I thought I might have seen you before. <laughs> you might have seen me around around. Around. Yeah. And, and, and uh, next year, or you know, I'm glad you're here because if I can help you at all, I met a few teachers. Actually, I just got an, uh, an invitation by Mrs. Lockwood to be part of a STEM discussion. Nice. My my interest is in STEAM, the importance of formal arts education. Right. But the whole idea is what you were saying about bringing the computer in the classroom, that, I mean, that's a proper thing. Yes. Uh, and I'm, anything I can do to help you, um, you now have an alum cadre <laughs> 14. 14. Now, was that the one with Glenn uh, Gillard? 14 is just this past year. Oh, okay. No, no. I need people from... 13, I think, from 12 to 13, or whatever, whatever, I'm nine, and um, if I can help you, or, you know, uh, brainstorm, or to participate, Thank or whatever, um, I'm totally into it. Is the only you? thing is, I won't be at Venice anymore, because I was displaced, uh -huh. and um, I'm going to be at West Adams, so I, I was, I, I had a, it was an interesting case of where the, uh, the, the, the interviewers they really like you know, some of the stuff they've been doing here. So that, that was such a position over there. But you know what? Yeah, uh, what, what a, yeah or and actually have pretty good connections with a lot of the institutions there. So if, if, if they need anything, I'll be more than happy to go back home. I, I left all my all the equipment there. I left it. I left it. So there, there's, a, there's a fully functioning lab in the there. Cool. Thank you so much. Uh, and and uh, yeah, if you if you know me, if you need anything from the schools, I I yeah, yeah, yeah. Right.
Well, you know, if you if you need some, you know, tight information like that, uh, yeah, I'll be a glad to provide it. And um, the booster club, are you right there? That's it. Yeah, there's. Yeah, because if you're with the uh, Nazis and Nike group, the booster club has got some. They've got some really good connections. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Now let me turn. Uh, and.